So, you want to make a sunset scene. Well, why don't you have a sun and then just set him down at the scene of the of the crime. The scene of the... Have a sun and set him down at the scene. Sunset scene of the crime. Hey guys, welcome back to Touch by Kai. I'm Kai and today we are back. I don't even know what that was. Just, just, let's just, pr let's just move on. Okay, guys. <laughs> We're back in Blender 2.81, taking a look at uh, a sunset scene in Blender. That's kind of hard to say. A sunset scene. It's not hard to say at all. Never mind. Um, we're going to delete on default cube. Delete. Um, and I'm going to hit shift A to add in a mesh plane. And this plane is going to be our ocean. We're not going to hit S to scale it up. We're not going to do any of that nonsense. We're just going to go ahead and go over here to the modifiers tab and add a modifier. This is going to be the ocean modifier, which is right here. Boom, skiggity. You can see how we didn't need to scale it up because it's going to scale it up by itself. Um, and now this isn't going to play. It's not going to do anything. It's just an ocean modifier. It's just for pretty looks. It's not actually animated. Um, so we're going to actually animate this. I'm going to turn my start frame to zero. Yes. And then we're going to go ahead and go to zero. And our timeline down here, open that up a little bit. Just drag it up. Um, and I'm going to hover my cursor over top of the time value right here and hit I on my keyboard. I. Like your eyeball. Uh, and then we're going to go hit this little button right here to go to the last frame, which is 250 by default. And then we're going to change the time to 10. Hit enter and then hover our cursor over top of that and hit I once again to insert another keyframe. I is just to keep the, the hotkey to insert a keyframe. So, next thing's up. I'm going to hit 0 on my numpad to go into the camera's view. I'm going to hit T. I'm sorry, I'm going to hit N, not T. And then T on my N on my keyboard. There you go. So the N key brings that up. Or you could just hit this little... Uh, hit this little uh, arrow right here and it opens it up go to view and and check lock camera to view Then we're gonna use we're gonna use our scroll wheel to zoom in and out and our middle mouse button to pan around and get a nice little Angle here And we're gonna move about right there because the, the waves are gonna go up So I want to make sure we have a lot of space right here So nothing is moving around all crazy like so I'm gonna uncheck that now that we have it moved where we want And now I can move out of the camera's view so we can move around properly um, So now if I play this the waves are going to play, and you can see that they're playing, but there's kind of like a weird slow and stop thing going on because of the way Blender does keyframes. So you can see when it comes to a finish, it kind of slows to a finish, and when it starts, it kind of speeds up over time, which is just super weird, and it just doesn't look how the ocean works. It doesn't look how the ocean works. That didn't even make sense. It doesn't look like how the ocean works. <laughs> um, so we're going to fix that by dragging this over from the left. So I'm going to just put my cursor up here and then just drag over. And we're going to open this up. We're going to click this little button right here. And then we're going to change this to the graph editor. We haven't been here in a while. Um, and then we're going to go up to key and change this interpolation mode to linear. Now, you can see how that line goes from that curvy line like this with the Bezier curves to the, uh, the straight hard edge, which is pretty sweet. So that's going to make it so that the waves start and stop on a constant rate instead of like, like smoothing up like this. So now it just... Ooh, you know, like that. That's a technical term. Ooh, right there. Um, if I play now, you can see it, the ocean waves just start and they just stop um, by themselves. They don't slow down anymore and speed up, which is nice. That's what we need. So that's what we're going to do. Um, and now, next thing we got to do is uh, actually just the rest of the lighting for the scene. So I'm going to select this lamp that we have here um, and go to the lamp tab. And, and change this to sun. So sun is going to help us out a little bit. But you see this strength is really, really, really high because it was on point by default. And point is much less strong than sun is. So we don't need this to be on a 1,000 because if I were to go to render viewport chaining, you can see everything's just solid white because a 1,000 is like insane death for a sun lamp. So I'm going to change this from a 1,000 to, uh, to 10, and that's still way too much. So we're going to do uh, 1, and that's much better. Um, you can see this is the shading. That's how dark it is, really. And this is how light the, the plane is now. So the ocean is now, rather. So with our ocean selected, I'm going to go to the uh, material tab and hit new. And then we're going to go ahead and change the base color to a very slight blue color. You don't want to go overboard because water is not actually blue. Water is clear. But when, you know, everything happens in the ocean, things get reflected. Depending on where you are in the world, it will look a little bit more blue, a little less blue, a little more green, whatever else. Just depending on what's underneath the ocean, the salt water content, and whatever else. So, uh, water is not actually blue, but I'm going to tint it very slightly blue just for the sake of, you know, the visuals of this scene. So... Um, we're going to go ahead and turn the specular all the way up because water's shiny and we're going to turn the roughness down because water's shiny 
Now, I want to go for a more stylistic kind of approach with this, so I'm going to turn the roughness all the way down. Uh, you don't, I, I don't usually recommend doing that unless you're doing, like, materials that are, like, not real materials, like sci-fi materials, because nothing is 100% shiny, but... I want to do a stylistic water thing today, so I'm doing 100% shiny. Usually, I recommend like 0 .001, but forget that today. We don't need you, 0 .01. We don't need that. We don't need that. Um, so, I'm going to go ahead and turn up the sheen. You can turn the sheen up a little bit. You don't really need it, though, so that's kind of unnecessary. You can see very up, like, if you look up, look in this area right here, you can see the sheen kind of making a difference right there so i'll leave that on looks pretty nice and the sheen tint as well that's going to help out with the color can't really tell because our color is not that deep but uh, might as well just turn it all the way up um for the rest of this you can see if i were to rotate our lamp you can see we have some watery effects which is nice that's that's the style that i was going for the hard edge kind of thing going on here so i'm gonna go to the camera view by hitting zero and then I'm going to double tap R on our lamp until I get this in a place where I like it, which is about right there. So I want this really bright, bright, bright light coming from this angle. And by the way, this is a great time to check to see if your water ooh, ever comes out of the camera's view. So like if it ever does like that and you can see the edge, that's not good. You want to make sure you can't see that. So just make sure your camera's uh, resting on the edge at all times so it doesn't like come out of the, 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 the view. Uh, there we go. We're good. So because I don't want this to be white... I'm going to go ahead and select our lamp, um, and I'm going to change this color. But first, I want to go to the World tab and change the background color to about almost a little bit more than halfway up. And then I'm going to change this to a nice deep blue like this. Because, I, like I said, I'm going for this really nice style today. So, uh, I wanted to rotate this a little bit more. Maybe it's kind of big. I want them to be a little smaller, like maybe... Eh, that's fine. I like it like that. It's cool. Um, I like it like that's fine. Uh, yeah, we're gonna do that, and then I'm gonna change the color of the lamp to something very stylistic as well. So we'll go to the lamp, and then we'll change the color to the lamp um, to something maybe like this, and I'll change the strength to what do you say five maybe? Eh, not five. One. We'll, we'll leave it on one, and we'll do a lighter color like like that, I guess. Maybe two. No, one. Leave it on one. All right. And the shadow can be unchecked because we don't need that. It's just for the actual reflection. Um, and what else? Oh, hit Shift A. And we're going to add in a sun back here. Now, this is going to be the cool part. So, I'm going to add in a sun by hitting circle. And before we click anywhere else, before we move anything, because we don't want this little box to go away down here, this add circle box, we're going to hit this open and change the fill type from nothing to in gone. Then hit S to scale this bad boy way up, and then RX 90 to rotate it 90, degree, 90 degrees on the X axis. Now, uh, I'm going to move this to approximately where this, this light is coming from. So hit GX to move it over, then GY to move it back, and then G to move it up a little bit. Now, uh, that looks good about right there. I want to get maybe about half of the moon in there. This could be the, the moon. <laughs> half of the sun in there, because it's sunset, not moonset. Um, we're going to hit uh, new material on this, this sun. And I'm going to change the base color. Oh, I'm actually going to, before we do that, I'm going to change this to emission. Sorry. Uh, and then we're going to uh, change this color to like a reddish, orangish, yellow, like that. But I'm also going to turn the strength up to somewhere around maybe 10 or even 20. I want this to be like white, white, so maybe 30. But the thing that's going to really help us out here is I'm going to turn Bloom on, and Bloom is what's really going to help us out here. So you can see how that just really puffs the scene up and really makes it nicer. And I'm going to do one more thing that's going to also puff the scene up here. I'm going to I'm also going to put a subsurf on this. So right now you can see you can kind of see the edges of the circle, which doesn't look very good. So I'm going to go to the Modifier tab and add a modifier of Subdivision Surface. That's going to smooth that out a little bit. Maybe even bump it up to two. With the camera selected, I'm going to go to the Camera tab. And then go to depth of field and check that. Make sure that's checked on. Now you can see it got a little blurry, but we're going to fix that because we're going to drop that down and change the f-stop all the way down. We're turning it all the way down. Uh, that sounds like Kevin Hart. Turn it all the way down. Uh, anyway, uh, we're going to change <laughs> we're going to change the focus distance, and we're going to turn that about. We're not going to leave it all in the front like this, so only the 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 front is clear. We're not going to put it all the way in the back, so only the back's clear. We're going to put it somewhere in the middle. So right about there, maybe 30 meters is about the center of the canvas is now in center which is nice so we have a little bit of depth of field up close uh one of my favorite things we've done in 2020 so far uh happy 2020 by the way and also make sure you turn on screen space screen space reflections hope you ladies and gentlemen enjoyed it i will see you in the next one but until then bye bye